Welcome to section 4.2.2, part 2. We're going to step back for a moment and look at problems 76 and 77 and 78 for a moment. Um, some things I forgot to mention in the previous video. You want to kind of be thinking when you're doing this about your scale on your graph. We've talked about that a lot. But because my number of my Y number had to go up to 200 or even a big number because I wasn't sure, I needed these to go up by something other than one. I chose to go up by 10 and that worked well with what we were doing. I had a lot of space because my X's didn't need to be that much. So I went up by two blocks equal to one or in other words, each block's worth a half. I chose weeks as my independent variable because that's what we kind of would think normally to keep track of. Keep track of the weeks and as a result, we can make a formula or an equation that will tell us the amount of money. So the dependent variable y was the amount of money. Okay, let's look at this problem. Uh, problem 79. In a table, we want to try to find the intersection of these two tables, which is going to be where their x's and y's are exactly the same. Here, the x's and y's aren't the same. And as I go through, I see my x's are the same in both tables, but the y's that are with them are not the same. And so I don't have a clear, um, I don't see clearly where the intersection is, but I can kind of see a trend. It looks like these right here are closer to each other than say some of these other ones are. And so it looks like the intersection will probably happen between one and two. Don't know exactly where, but that's a, just looking at the tables, that's my approximation. So we're gonna make a graph. Once again, I've done some scaling on here to help make it easier on me to graph. And so let's go ahead and just graph it from the rule using the shortcut we have. The starting point or the y-intercept is at negative six, so I'm gonna put a mark there. And my rate of change is four. That means for every unit I go over, I'm going to go up four. Well, we've gotta look at the scale. The scale here is one is over two blocks, so I'm gonna go over two. So that's over one, and then up four. Four from, if I go up from negative six, a quantity of four, it's gonna take me to the two. So right there. I now see at least using this scale, that means I'm gonna go over two and up two blocks. So I'm gonna do that a couple times. I'm just gonna stair step over. And I'm gonna draw my line. And if I've drawn it right, which we always hope to do, a couple of the points in the table might be clear here. We had one point on this line, which was negative three, negative 18, which looks like that is right, because that's negative 18. So that is a nicely drawn line. Let's draw the other one. Y equals negative 2X plus 3. I know the line's going to go down, and I know it's going to start at 3. 3 is going to be a little trickier, because it's in between. Let's see, I've got to go over one unit. And by the scale, that's over two blocks. Then I've got to go down two. So that's going to take me to right there. Over one, down. Should be right there. Stair step a couple of times just to make the points a little further apart so I can get a better line. And now I'm going to look for the intersection. And these seem to intersect right here at about one and a half on the X and looks like about zero on the Y. Now, we're going to check this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our answers from the graph to check 
um, and see if we've actually found the right place or just about how close we are. The points we found were 1.5 and 0, and this was my x equals, and this was my y equals. So let's plug that in and see if that's what we get. Okay, 4 times 1.5 minus 6. 4 times 1.5 happens to be 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. And the y from before was 0. And yes, 0 does equal 0, so that seems to match. Let's see if it works here. 0 sh should equal negative 2 times 1.5 plus 3. That's going to be negative 3 plus 3, or 0. And 0 equals 0. So we've got the right point of intersection. If these did not equal, well, then we would know that something went wrong. Now, tomorrow, or the next unit, we're going to learn a way to do this algebraically. It's really cool. Um, I know in class we, we went through some of it with some of you. Um, I just want to remind you that when you do a graph... And, and this is one of the big things they're going to show you tomorrow, is that when you do a graph... The bigger your scale has to be, the more likely you are to have your line be off a little bit. And the little bit that it's off will cause you to have um, errors. It'll make it more of an estimation. Graphing always, or at least almost always, gives you an estimation of where they cross, but may not tell you exactly where if your lines are just drawn a little bit, a little bit off. It is hard to get a good straight line. The next little video we're going to do is an extra. We're going to show you how to find the intersection of lines on the graphing calculator, and we're going to use these same problems. So I would encourage you, if you have a TI graphing calculator or another graphing calculator that you know how to use, you might want to, to watch the next video.